A lot of bad Rocket League players hold back their progress by thinking that they're good. But if I've learned one thing in my almost 10,000 Rocket League hours, it's this. The moment you think you don't have anything left to improve is the moment you stop improving. So to simplify improvement for you, today I want to talk about the nine Rocket League fundamentals. I'm going to give a one minute speed run of each of these nine fundamentals so that by the end, you can pick the one or two biggest things on your list that are weaknesses for you and you can fix those. Rocket League fundamental number one is corners. You see the mistake a lot of new players make. They think if the ball's anywhere near my goal, bad. And if the ball's anywhere near the opponent's goal, good. You see, the Rocket League pitch is much less of a grid as it is sort of hot spots. Yes, it's true that if the ball's near the center of your net in your midfield in shooting distance, that's dangerous. But turns out your corners are actually one of the safest places for the ball to be. This is because while yes, the ball is technically near your net, if the ball's in the corner, the actual attacking angle is so narrow that if you learn some of the tactics we'll talk about later in this video, it should be very rare for somebody to score on you from your corner. When I used to do one-on-one -on -one coaching part-time, what I used to teach my students is this idea that corners eat time. What this means is if you're defending and the ball comes into your corner, the worst thing you can do is panic and try to challenge it or cut it off. Most of the time, you can just rotate back post and let the play come to you. Rocket League fundamental number two, shooting. Ranked players, listen up. This map is called Aim Training by Coco, and it's just one of the top 22 free workshop maps that we posted a master list for in our new free coaching community. That's right. For the first time ever, I've created a free version of my coaching program, the Grand Champ Bootcamp. So whether you're looking for workshop maps, training packs, or anything else to rank up in Rocket League, this school community is the place to be. As a bonus, we're putting on special events for players who join in the first month. So if you've been on the fence, but you're ready to rank up now, click the first link to join below. And once you're done, back to the video. I've made three or four tutorials on shooting right now, but honestly, I think the number one reason people are bad at shooting in Rocket League is because they train it wrong. Let me explain. The way most people train shooting is by getting game reps. But the problem is just like with aiming in a shooter game, just playing ranked is a slow way to improve your shooting. The reason is because if you play 3v3 in Rocket League, you're splitting all of your shooting chances with your two teammates. This is why somebody who's doing a shooting training pack for 15 minutes a day is going to see more improvement in their gameplay than somebody who plays five hours of competitive 3v3. Because people who train shooting are going to improve their shooting 10 times as much as people who never train shooting and just hope it gets better from playing ranked. Fundamental number three is recoveries. One thing that the pro player Calm told me that I still can't forget is it doesn't matter what mechanic you're trying to learn in Rocket League, you're going to have to recover afterward. The biggest difference between a champ air dribble and a grand champ air dribble is not the actual air dribble, it's the recovery afterward. The best players in Rocket League don't necessarily overcommit or make bad decisions less than you. It's just when they do, they're fast enough to get back in time. Having good recoveries is sort of like having a second life, which is what makes recoveries a mechanic worth training. The thing that got me the most improvement with my recoveries was actually going into free play and forcing myself to spin out. So a drill I want to show you here is literally go into free play, drive up the wall and pretend you just got bumped off the wall. You're going to jump off and intentionally try to land sideways, land backwards, land in whatever weird direction you weren't expecting and then use power slide and use half lips to get back on track. Practice this for five minutes a day and you'll play so much faster. The fourth Rocket League fundamental you need to understand is game sense. Most new players hear the word game sense and they think what that means is going back post. True game sense is being able to make decisions with your positioning and with your objectives in game based on prior experience and pattern recognition. This is why it can be dangerous to just remember rules. So I did a video called I Smurfed in Diamond to show it's not luck, where I basically did a private lobby with some viewers 
And afterwards, I did a replay analysis for them. I remember there was a one-on-one -on -one situation where I was attacking this player's goal and they were sitting back on their back post thinking they were defending me. So I explained 1v1 is where you want to shadow defend because shadow defending gives you a better chance at saving a 1v1 than sitting back post does. This is why when you're learning game sense, the takeaway I want you to have is you don't want to ask what somebody is doing. You want to ask why is the player doing this? But if you want to really master the game, you need to understand what each move is good for and when to use it. That's how you're going to see the best results, especially when you're playing good players. Rocket League fundamental number five, 1v1 play. Yes, you heard me right. 1v1 play is a fundamental of Rocket League. I remember I did a coaching session after I first hit Grand Champ. I asked him what it would take for me to get SSL, and he literally told me, dude, you just need to play 1v1, so that way you can score more one-on-one -on -one situations and get scored on less when you're last man back. I tell you this because as much as game sense and positioning and shooting and recoveries does matter, sometimes the difference between getting scored on or scoring is just a last minute decision on the goal line. And the only way you're gonna improve that 1v1 play is playing more once. So if you've been a long time threes or twos main and you've literally never played ones in your life, I'm not saying you have to become a 1v1 main, but a little bit of ones can go a long way towards improving your overall skill as a player. Rocket League fundamental number six, boost management. Wait, wake up before you fall asleep with me talking about boost. This is not gonna be me telling you to go pick up more small pads. I wanna give you something that you can actually implement in your games. So the way that I see a lot of low ranked players think about boost is they think playing and grabbing boost are two separate things. They drive around the field, they hit the ball until they run out of boost. And then when their boost hits zero, they think, okay, now I stop playing. I shut off ball cam. I go get boost. And I hope that when I come back, the ball's not in my net and we resume. That's like thinking about having boost as an on or off switch that you have to replenish. And it's a bad way to play ranked or in other words, an easy way to get scored on. Instead, I want you to think about boost as the second option to your gameplay. So instead of looking at your boost meter, seeing it zero, and then deciding you have to leave the play, I want you to look at your boost meter, see that it's zero, but then before you're allowed to go get boost, you check the play to predict how long you're needed. What you'll notice is good players only leave the play to get boost if they're not needed. So they'll see they have zero boost, they'll check the play, and if the play is still developing or there's about to be a center or they're about to need to make a save, they won't leave. They'll stay there until they're allowed to. When you switch your mentality here from this sort of selfish way of playing of I'm out of boost, I need to leave to this more selfless way of playing. Yes, you might be driving around the field on hundred boost less often, but you're gonna have much more impact in your games. When you play ranked, the ball comes first, boost is second. Rocket League fundamental number seven, demos. The biggest difference I've seen between champs and grand champs and plats and diamonds is their use of physical play. Most plats and diamonds only really do three things in ranked. They either hit the ball, get boost, or rotate back. But champs and grand champs, on the other hand, hit the ball, get boost, but before they decide to rotate back, they check if they can demo and then rotate back. It's a really small difference and most of the time it doesn't matter. But as you get higher and higher level, you have to understand that you can't always be the one on the ball scoring. So if you have boost and it's not your turn to hit the ball, instead of just rotating and resetting, if you can look for opportunities to demo opponents while you rotate, you're gonna become so much more of an effective player in ranked. Rocket League fundamental number eight, aerial car control. When a lot of people hear aerial in Rocket League, they think they need to spin more. Let me tell you, that's not the fastest way. The best players in Rocket League use aerial to get themselves lined up with the touch they want to make and no more. But don't take it from me, take it from the pro Appjack. I was doing an interview with him about the rank system for another video, and he told me that even he catches himself air rolling too much and has to remind himself to stop it. So many new players think you need to completely roll your car over and be upside down to hit the ball hard, when in reality, most times just a tap of air roll is more than you need for the most powerful air roll shot. When it comes to aerial car control, remember less is more. Rocket League fundamental number nine, 
consistency. Look, I could tell you for hours about the perfect ways to train. You know, we could set up a whole routine for you where you're playing 48 minutes of 1v1 with a 15 minute warm up and 35 minutes of training packs after. But the truth is, the secret trick to ranking up in Rocket League is consistency. No matter what you're training, no matter what you're doing, in a game like Rocket League, you need to do it for long enough to see results. And it doesn't matter if something is the best idea in theory. If you can't stick to it in practice, is it really going to help you? I mean, look at it this way. If every time you play Rocket League, you are miserable. Like you're doing all these training packs or you're playing ranked or whatever, and you're just bored or you're tilted or you're frustrated, or it's just not fun. You're not going to be in a mindset to enjoy what you're doing and stick to it. Or even if you are, because you're not enjoying what you're doing, you're not going to be creative. You're not going to be soaking up new things. And whether or not that way might be the best way, it's not going to work out in the long term. The only way you're going to get consistent with all these things, whether it's 1v1 play, whether it's shooting, whether it's with recoveries, is by consistently putting in time. So at this point, what I want you to do is pick one or two of these things that you're most weak at, but also that you could actually stick to and improve. Point is, pick something that you can enjoy, that you can stick to, and that's going to help you get better at ranked. As always, thanks so much for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next video.